public. Whoop. Oh, I'm trying to get there. Hi everyone. Welcome to Cat's Creations live on Sunday, where tonight I'm going to teach you guys how to make a pancake wreath um, with some ribbon pinwheels. Give me just one second so I can pull it up, make sure I can see you guys. Okay, here we go. Alrighty. So we're all set and ready to go. So before we get started, if you guys are new and this is your first time joining us, please let us know also where you're from because we'd like to, first of all, welcome you if this is your first time joining us. And number two, a lot of times crafting connections are made on Facebook Lives. Um, what else? Um, YouTube subscribers, if you'd like to know whenever we upload a new video, make sure you hit the subscribe button or subscribe bell in the upper right-hand corner on YouTube as well. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. And then um, to make sure that you get notified when we go live. Um, right now on our live, if you notice on your screen, if you tap on the video, you can get three little dots in the upper right hand corner. Clicking on those three dots allows you to open up a sub menu that either says turn off notifications for this post or turn on notifications for this post. You want to make sure that your notifications are turned on and that um, you'll be notified if you happen to have your phone in hand and you happen to be on Facebook during that time period, you should receive a notification. So. Um, as we are doing, this is a new layout for the 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath frame. I'm color coordinating these red, white, and blue, um, just to kind of tie in the whole red, white, and blue theme. I promised you guys that if the materials came in today that I would do the tutorial. So the good thing is, is they showed up yesterday. Um, we have all the materials, which it, aside from the small little embellishments, Everything is from Craft Outlet. So you can um, order all the stuff that you see here on craftoutlet.com and you don't have to have a wholesale license or a business license to order from them. Anybody can order from them. Um, so what I'm gonna do is show you how to wire up your frame. So pretty much it's what we've always done, which is wire together the two innermost rails in each of the six sections on a Dollar Tree 14 inch wreath frame. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to um, wire together the outside two and I'm doing them just on the welds. So I'm kind of doing a little crisscross right here and I'm just gonna put these on each of the welds. So there is that one. We're gonna go ahead and add a red here. I'm just trying to color coordinate these so I don't always have the colors going together. Here's our red. And then right here will be our blue. Just like right there, little crisscross. Make sure that your pipe cleaners are fairly even. Okay, we'll go back and do our white. And then- Hi girls, thanks for sharing. Appreciate it, Julie. Yes. So if you've ever wanted to know how to do a pancake wreath, save this video. And the way you save it is by sharing it. Sharing it save, or puts it on your page, and then um, you will have access to that whenever you need this. So it's a little easier to find rather than trying to, um, you know, look through all the videos that I have. So. Nancy said, hi, new to this site. Hi, Nancy. Welcome. Hi, Nancy. Welcome. What's also. Yes, and also the stars at the bottom. So for the month of March, we are donating all of our stars money raised, which is every single star is equivalent to one cent. So if you donate stars, um, all of that money for the month of March is going towards the local churches in Ukraine to help anyone who has been affected by what's happening over in Ukraine we found that by working with local churches, they're more adapt to know what the individual needs are within their communities. 
So if you want information on the organization directly, it is ukrbaptist.org. And you can either donate directly to them or you can read up on the information and make sure that you feel good about where your money is going. So with this layout, we have 12. We have six on the inside, six on the outside, and this is how you set it up for a pancake wreath. Now, why do they call it a pancake wreath? Because it's gonna be flat and thin. This wreath will be no more than three inches at its um, highest point, which means that it's going to fit during a, or between the storm door, between the actual door and the storm door itself. So a lot of people look specifically for storm door designs. This is one of them. And I think you guys will love the way that this looks in the end. So um, any questions about pipe cleaner layout before we go ahead and move on to the actual, um, how we're gonna put it all together. Okay, what I am doing is I am taking, this is a red, white, and blue metallic mesh, again, from Craft Outlet. This isn't the wide foil, this is just the regular metallic foil mesh. These are cut to 30 inch pieces. I am going to lay these out, and then what you're going to do is just kind of go right up the middle. I think the blue, yeah, the entire blue section is our middle. So you are just going to gather this by pulling the mesh towards you. Kind of pleats it, but it gathers it as well. Nancy's from Ohio. Welcome, thanks for joining us from Ohio, Nancy. Also my favorite design. Nice. Okay, so these are little bow ties or ruffles, and what you're going to do is you're going to take these, and this is a little different than what we've done in the past. You're going to lay these sideways. Normally, we go finished edges to the inside. We're tilting them to the outside, and we're going to do the inside first. So I'm going to go ahead and fold those flat. I'm going to go ahead and lay this right here. And we are going to take our pipe cleaner. Marcel said, yay, Kat, I finally caught the live with you. Four, five, I know, right? Okay, so also make sure that if you have like sweater material, you pull up your sleeves because this mesh on the edge, um, sometimes it gets a little like, becomes almost like a Velcro. So it'll grab onto things. Um, really nice sweaters or shirts of that nature. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna overlap these. So I'm just taking one and overlapping it right on top of the other so that you make these little circles or like grandma doilies, right? Except we're not having to worry about um, knitting them. So they overlap so that you have nice flat round circles. Oops. I think I'm actually supposed to do the outside first. So sorry, let's go to the outside. That's right. Let me do this. I'm gonna pick this whole thing up, move it down to the bottom. This is what happens when you're so used to routine that when you do something new, you have to kind of redo that. So we're gonna push all the inside ones because we build the outside first. So. Rita, thanks for sending 200 stars. Appreciate it. Thank you, Rita. And there's one thing y'all have said so far that the site hasn't worked. Like, you know how the site doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. So I said, you need to just go into www.duckduckgo. Yeah, this if you go to DuckDuckGo, a lot of times if you're trying to reach websites it's outside the, the U.S., the browser is, yeah. yeah, you have to go to DuckDuckGo, which gives you access outside. Okay, so outside ones, sorry. Outside, outside, outside. Okay, there's one. Oops. Go ahead and grab this one. Do the exact same thing. I just always use scissors or something to weigh down the end so that it keeps it from rolling back up. And I'm rolling these opposite the way that they went on the roll. Okay, there's that last one. We're gonna go ahead and place this right on the inside. Outside, sorry. There we go. 
And then as we have our outside piece and our other edge, we're going to overlap them just like that. So they lay nice and flat. I'm going to do the same thing here, one over the other. Okay, that helps keep those cut frayed edges from like being right on any one particular place. And so what you're starting to see is they're going to overlap each other just slightly. Starting in the matches cut the 30 inches. And yes, parents, you went back in and started on the outside. Yes. I like wasn't thinking. This is what happens when you, you know, you've been doing the same thing, same techniques over and over. I always say that practice makes permanent, not perfect. And that's exactly what is happening here is you just get into your routine. You know how things are supposed to go. So that's exactly what's happening. So here we go over, under. We're kind of overlapping those just like that. And we are going to flip one on top of the other, just like this. We'll lay that flat. And I'm gonna take my pipe cleaners, just get them ready for next step. So this is where we are doing on the pancake method. It's more of a flat, thin, but I guarantee you we're not really gonna sacrifice quality here, um, but we are using one third less mesh. Now, by cutting these at 30 inch pieces, they're all the same for all 12, you use up exactly one roll of mesh. So that is another perfect design for pancakes so that you don't have to worry about how many rolls of mesh you need, in this case, just one. And so we're trying to keep this really patriotic with red, white, and blue. Okay, back to the outside. Go ahead and twist that on real good. We're gonna open these up, grab this edge, lay it down here, one over the other, just like that. And right here, same thing, one over the other until we have like these cute little perfect rounds just like that. Okay. Yeah, you gotta make sure it's a 30 foot roll, not 25 foot roll. Yeah. Yes. You're one, yeah, you wanna make sure you're working with a full 10 foot, is it 10, 10 foot? Yard. 10 yard or 30 foot roll. Make sure those stay on the inside. I wish it was 10 yards, actual 10 yards, because then it would be 33 feet. Right. Would it be? Yeah. Because a foot, or it's like <laughs> 12 a inches. A yard is like 3.3 feet. No, a yard is 3 feet. 3 feet 3 inches. No, it's 3 feet exactly. <laughs> 12 inches equal a foot, 3 feet is 36 inches. We'll let that one stew for you. So, last one. Are you really Googling that? I gave you the, the simple math breakdown. A yard, 36 inches or three feet. Sorry, I'm thinking of you. <gasps> Wait, I'm right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, so here we go again. One over the other. One. Let's get this one. Over the other. Let's make sure those lay flat. So as you can see, this is what's known as a pancake. So it's thin and it's flat for the bottom layer. And you're going to build this in layers. So you're going to work the entire bottom and then you're going to work the top. So with the first layer here. All right, it was 30 inches. What? She said that I hear that there, 39 inches. I said no, 30 inches. 30 inches. Yeah. The 30 inch pieces. Let's yeah. clarify that. Okay. 
So the ribbon we're using is this red, white, and blue, and it's kind of got a glitter on the field of stars. And then we're also using the chevron. These are two and a half inch pieces and they're both cut to 13 inches. And I'm gonna alternate what goes on top, but so far, we're just gonna line them up, fold them in half so that we know where the middle point is and then we're going to gather. And then we're gonna open these up. We're gonna place two in each of our six. And I'm actually going to snip the leftovers. There we go. I'm going to take this and fold this down behind our ribbon. And then you wanna fan everything to the outside. So we're going to pull these to the outside and then these to the outside. Nothing goes to the inside. Everything goes outside, just like that. And then we're gonna move on. We're gonna put the chevron with the stars and stripes on top this time. Let's find middle. Go ahead and gather. Place right inside our pipe cleaner. Give it just enough twist to make sure it can't come undone on its own. Snip that off. Tuck the piece behind. We're going to fan them to the outside again. So I always like to pop the undersides. So this way they will lay to the outside just like that. And so we're kind of having this little different staggered pattern. All right, so wow, you're not using inch and a half ribbon? Nope, no inch and a half. Can you use it on this method? Absolutely. You can, it just kind of, you'll well, see. You'll she kind is of using anything. inch and a half ribbon, but you'll see what it's used for. Right? I'm not using any inch and a half ribbon. Uh, oh, no, you're right. Okay, sorry. two, three, four, and five. Snip this off. Jennifer said, thank you for the awesome sports box. Oh, you are so welcome. To see Laker stuff. Yeah, exactly right. So this just allows you that little bit of a competitive edge over people. Hi, Jennifer. She said, I finally made it to a live thing from Sacramento. Nice, welcome. She's the one I got your sports box. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just like that. So you can kind of see how the ribbons are all kind of coming out. And I like alternating the two different colors, one on top of the other, so that you get a different effect. You don't have to, you can just let them all stay the same. Because remember in this design, it's not about um, you know, how much you can put on it. It's all going to be about that thickness. So we need to make sure that we're keeping our thickness down to between three to four inches. Although four is really treading over the fact because most people have about a three to a three and a half inch gap. Some people have that full four inches. So we're just alternating how these fan out. I told you it was gonna to be totally different for you guys today. Yeah, so there's a total of uh, 26, I'm oh, sorry, 18, two and a half inch tabs? No. Or... No, there's oh, a total, 16. no. 16. There are 13 and a half inch, there are 13 inch tails, right? 13 inch shells, and there are eight each. Eight and eight, so it's 16. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. 16, is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. But. 13 inch tails. But it all is going to depend on how you decide to decorate the upper level. This is my recipe for what works on this particular sign and design that I have going. Um, most people just finish off with all ribbon. Um, there is no bow on this at all. 
it's all just tails and um, the ribbon pinwheels that I put on here. So you'll see, remember it's not, this isn't about height and fullness. This is about, you know, keeping it legitimately nice, but still fitting through a storm door. Because I know a lot of people that don't have storm doors don't understand that whole theory, but people with storm doors, um, if they got regular wreaths, they kind of have to compress it between that glass storm door front and um, their front door or put them on the outside of their storm door. So they need something that is thin enough so they don't smash everything. Richard asked, well, is it a bow? No, no bow on this design. Because a bow would make it really thick. Yeah, a bow is going to add about three inches in height for this, and we can't have height. And a strong bow. Yeah. Mm hmm. And so Last one. Have you tried a woman ruffle and pancake combo? Uh, a no. On the bottom and pancake on the top. No, I have not. This was just my first one. So because I really liked how this turned out and because so many people asked about it on Friday is the reason why I'm showing it today. Everybody wanted to know, how do you do it? Where do you get all the stuff? How do you make all this, everything? And so I said, okay, well, if we can get all the supplies in, I'll show you how to do it. So you guys will know how to make one. Once again, it goes into your wreath making resume that out again so we can pull these two apart okay so as you can tell this is layer one complete okay so right now this is only this is how I'm gonna be able to tell this is an inch and a half thick right now from the bottom to the top inch and a half we won't count this because this is all going to get, the next layer is going to be built on top of that. So everything is going to need to be flat and like precise. Any questions on the first layer before we go on to layer number two? All the sales that you just put in right now are 13 inches. Yep, every single one is 13 inches because I like where they fell to the outside. And currently right now, if we measure from ribbon tip to ribbon tip, you're about at 23 inches. If I went from deco mesh to deco mesh, you're looking at about 20 inches and a half. So there's just a little bit of the ribbon that's just slightly projecting out past the deco mesh. Karen said the designer of the pancake puts a ball on it. There's, the pancake's been out for a while though, and people do so many different variations. Mm -hmm. so. So again, this is the recipe for the design that um, I showed my private group. Was it, I think it was Tuesday. Um, we're doing deco mesh base methods, learning all of the mesh bases. And so it was the first time I had done a pancake wreath. It's probably not going to be my only one, but... Um, this is a design that I liked because I'm really picky about the quality. And you'll kind of see when we start working on the next layer, it kind of feels like we destroy the entire first layer. Okay, so right now I'm getting my pipe cleaners up and out because they're kind of down in between. So we're getting those ready. Here's the last one. We're just pulling these back up in between these two layers, just like so, okay? I'm also get these open and ready for our next layer. Okay, what do you guys think of first layer? First layer look okay? It looks so good and you almost don't want to see what happens next, but there's a method, okay? So layer number two is gonna be the exact same thing that we did on layer one, which is the outside six, now we're gonna do it on the inside six. Same thing, 30 inch pieces of deco mesh. Doing the ruffle method and we're laying them sideways, okay? Going right over the top of what we already had there. So 
love the color choice is going to be great. Jamie said this is going to be adorable when it finished. Okay, so now we're doing the same thing. We're picking up our deco mesh. We are going to layer one on top of the other. Here. You always want to make sure you're grabbing the top mesh and not the bottom one. Just like that. There's first one. And most of the time I refrain from doing pancake method because they were hard to hide the frame. So it really depends on the mesh that you use. So because this is a little thinner than most, I chose to go with 30 inch pieces to give it a better coverage. So by the time we complete layer two, we won't see our frame any longer. So picking up one, one over the top of the other. Making that lay flat. Same thing here. One over the top. Getting that to lay. Okay. Do you guys have any questions at all about this method? Like I said, all the ribbon, the sign, the mesh, all came from craftoutlet.com. One over the other. Here we go. Thank you for sending stars, Patricia. Thank you, Patricia. Three hundred and ten. I appreciate that. Okay, there's that one, and then we're gonna grab our edge and our edge. We're gonna overlap those so we can have a flat circle, just like that. Isn't that nice? We laid in all that gorgeous ribbon to cover it all up. There is a reason though. At first, like when I was doing this, I was like, mm, I'm not liking that. That's such pretty ribbon. And we're only seeing like the tips of the tails. What the heck? Right in. But just uh, we use this method regularly for our song to our customers. Thank you. Awesome. So glad this is going to help you guys with that. So you ask if you're going to do kits for this week? Uh, I generally don't. And now with the supply chain coming to a grinding halt again in China, um, I think you're going to see who knows what's going to happen. I don't want to predict anything, but I know what happened when the shipping ports in China closed the last time. It was really hard to get supplies. No one knew when anything was going to come in. So, um, and I generally don't order supplies. I'm like you guys. I just go on craft outlet and pick two or three different designs for something. And then just kind of look at additional signs that I might have or deco mesh that I might have been looking for for the last six months. It's still not in stock. So you just kind of have to get creative on where you go and find them all now. Okay. Yes, uh, we, we used the wood burner to cut all the mesh. Let me make sure. Work out great. Yeah. Why well, don't have an extra piece in there? Did you cut 13? No, I cut 12. I'm going to look because I could have sworn I put 
a deco mesh so far in every. Jennifer, thanks you said. Oh no, nice it's right stars. there. Never mind. You're right. I'm wrong. I skipped my white one. Thank you, Jennifer, for that. Over. Got to make our rounds. So, Marcella, this is uh, voluntary. Voluntary, if you want to. If you can click on the little star symbol down below, you should have it. Um, Here's you can purchase stars, and then for every star you send is virtually around one penny. And yes. we're using it this month to help the churches and the misplaced families in Ukraine. We try to do a different fundraiser for that every month. So it only makes sense that we did this one this month. So 100 stars is a dollar, 400 stars is like four dollars. You don't really have to donate that much or send that much. It all, it all helps. It all adds up. And then we match whatever the, the entire group has raised for the month, 100%. Yeah, so if the group raises 60 bucks, we'll match 60 bucks. So here we go, one over the other. Rebecca sent 500 stars. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. Four, five, six. And it said there was a star party. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, I look down at my tablet and I see these. I think if so many people donate, it does it automatically. That is weird. Okay. So one over the other. Here's our last one. I kind of skipped one because I didn't find that one underneath. Okay, so I know it doesn't look attractive. It kind of looks like pancake batter mess right now, but you're gonna kind of see where it's all gonna kind of come together on the outside. So we can still see the tips of our ribbon underneath because those are still fanning out. But now you have to get creative. Most people continue the ribbon method on the top. You know, they would keep fanning out another four add um, their sign, and then they're done. Um, I will have to experiment with the whole bow method. I'm not going to do it today, but um, just to see where the bow would actually line up because we need to really make sure that it stays in that uh, ballpark measurement for storm door users. Otherwise, um, then we're not being true to our sizes. So... Okay, there is that layer. This sign is, believe it or not, I wanna say it's five, it's almost six inches. Not quite five and a half, but then not quite six either. And then it's right around 11 and a half inches. This is what's called a waterproof sign. It's kind of a plastic sign. So, couple of options when it comes to attaching our sign to our wreath. You could drill holes in the sides and then attach your floral wire and that would be perfect. But sometimes a lot of us don't have access to um, a drill to go ahead and drill that in. So I'm gonna show you an alternative. I am using, these are one inch commercial adhesive cable ties. They have an adhesive on the back and then it also allows you to feed your pipe cleaners through vertically or you can feed them through horizontally because they're made for electricians to go ahead and run wiring and zip tie the wiring where the wiring needs to stay in place. So we want to make sure that our pipe cleaners are in first. Makes it so much easier. You're going to go ahead and peel your adhesive off. Kind of center that onto our sign. Give it a push. And then we're gonna do the same on the other. They don't have to be perfect. And then I'm gonna show you, cause these have a tendency of coming undone in extreme temperature. If it gets too hot outside um, and depending upon the tension that is placed on securing this to a wreath, you might have one or both sides pop off. It happens a lot on the metal signs. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our hot glue and we're going to lay a bead of hot glue right 
along the edge of our cable tie. I'll kind of go up and over. Up and over. Do this one up here. It's kind of why I left a little bit of a lip. This is where you would use your bow tie bows all around the top. So yes. She's got some stuff coming, you just can't see it yet. Yeah. But you are right. I mean, definitely you could use those little, you know, double bows. Yeah. That would look super cute on here. Yeah, but you said this is a cost saver for customers too. It is, because this does not cost as much. It depends on your materials. You know, you can pick really expensive ribbon, and oh my, let me just tell you, ribbon prices have gone up a lot. Okay. So I am going to set this aside while this sets up. I did have it on high because when you use Gorilla Glue on the high setting, it um, liquefies it a little bit more. So it gives it extra durability in the extreme temperatures. So keep that in mind. Um, if you need stuff to stay on in extreme cold or extreme hot, um, you know, like Arizona or Texas or deserts or places where it's going to get below freezing, um, Make sure that your glue is on high to give yourself that perfect uh, temperature setting. So we're going to let that dry. While we're doing that, we are going to make what is called ribbon pinwheels. So the ribbon pinwheels are what are going to go on um, our wreath. Um, can I get you to go out into the garage and grab the sign, the same sign? just so that I can place it and show them kind of where it's all gonna go. I know I had both of them out here before, but I should have done that before I glued my cable ties on the back. So I'm gonna teach you how to make these ribbon pinwheels, and these are going to be what we're going to use on the top. They're super fun to make. You don't have to add glue. You could add glue if you wanted to, but you don't need to. They stay looking um, amazing just like this, and they're made with the same ribbons that we use around the outside um, of our ribbon or of our wreath. So we're using the chevron or we're using the, um, what is it? The red, white, and blue with the stars. So let me show you how we're gonna do those. Um, okay, this is where my ribbons went. I have a feeling he won't find the box, which is just like right outside our garage door. Um, but let me kind of show you what it looks like. So if I take this and I lay this right in here, okay, we are gonna add our pinwheels. Let's see, these are right over our outside ones. So I'm trying to see how we have these laid. Let's go red to red. That makes better sense. Okay, so we have our blue and our white and they're gonna go here. And I have another one here. And then we're gonna make coordinating ones for the top since I've already done the bottom to show you what it looks like. It just looks a little nicer, plus it still keeps the dimension low. So we're gonna make another one that goes here and another one of these that go here. Well, he's still figuring that out. Okay. Flip that back. It's just about ready. Okay, so how do you make a pinwheel? You take your two and a half inch ribbon and you cut six pieces to eight inch strips. So literally, these are eight inch pieces. We have six of them in each color. Then once you have these done, it's, it's okay, I already figured it out. You can come back. But it's okay. I already got the sign, it already dried, so we're good, thanks. All right, um, so you're gonna take these. I do them two at a time, but let me show you how to do it one at a time. This is where habit can kind of be your not so good friend because I get into the habit of always wanting to dovetail these, but we don't want to dovetail them. We want to turn them into points. So what I mean is, okay, a dovetail, we normally cut from our folded side to our wired point. 
This time I want you to flip it over, okay? To where you're gonna cut from the wired side to the point, just like this, okay? And so you turn it into a point, okay? You're gonna do that on the opposite side. So remember, here's habit. Flip it over and break the habit. Turn it into a point. Okay, just like that. We're gonna cut the points or the tips off. So I find it easier just to do them in bulk. So I can do two at a time. Dovetail, flip it. We're going against the grain. Okay, right to the end. Make sure these are restocked again. Fold them, flip it, and then cut from your wired point to the tip of your ribbon. So we have points. Okay. Edges together. There's our dovetail. Flip it. There's that. Edges together. Remember, here's our dovetail. We always want to be cutting on this side, on the wired side, to the end of our ribbon. So you make little points. Last one. Flip it. From here to the point. Here, flip it. I have to talk to myself because I can't tell you how many of these I kept dovetailing just based on habit. Okay. Rita said she got a great jackpot ribbon sale on eBay. Oh, she nice. Got bucks and you got six 1.5 rolls and 16 10 by 10 inch rolls. That's awesome. Nice. That's really good. Okay. So let me show you how we're going to put these together. Super simple. You need a chip clip because um, they're super good for helping hold all the pieces. And I'm sure you guys can all remember how we did paper airplanes, right? For our kids. We're gonna fold, start with right side fabric facing up. You're gonna go edge to edge, okay? And then just fold that. Thank you for the stars, Anna. Thanks, Anna. Richard said, is that the same one that is like in the poinsettia that you made? Yes. Yeah. Okay, then we're folding here. We just folded this edge down flip it over, fold the edge down, and then from here, I want you to clip it. Just take a chip clip and clip it so it kind of keeps it held in position. While you go ahead and do that with all of them in your set of six, you don't have to get an iron and iron them or try to, you know, make it, you know, overly perfect. The only time it, it like comes into play is when you're putting them together. You want to make sure that your pinpoints are roughly the same. And then again, chip clip it. So I just keep adding a new one each time. Fold, fold again. And yes, you can use these as at Christmas time to make ribbon points that is. So we are going, I'm keeping my points together. And all the ribbon on this one is from Craft Albert. Yes, everything on this wreath, even the sign, the mesh, everything, Craft Outlet. In half, fold again, okay, fold again. And then kind of just lay them next to each other, pull my chip clip off, put the ends down. Whoop, I missed the other side. There we go. Just something to keep them all in place. And um, you can even use your Bodabra. The only thing with the Bodabra though is it's not gonna hold them flat. Make sure, I'm trying to keep them. 
Jennifer said it gets that butterfly so it's cute little pink clips that would be perfect on all these too. Yes. That's true. We have the medium finer clips. Yeah. You can do anything. You can do chip clips. You can do um like I have the ones that look like this. You can use those. They just don't they don't hold it down. Like there's not enough of a bite to keep it in there for me. Marna, that's a good question. Um question, what do you do when someone buys two wreaths on your Etsy shop, but Etsy only charges shipping for one? Uh you set up your shipping profile wrong. You need to make sure that in your shipping profile that it says um, something in the profile says like first item shipping. It should be like $25 and then it says other items. You want to make sure you put $25 there because what that means is first item is $25. What is every consecutive item after that? Some people give discounts, um, but you for wreath makers, you always want to make sure it's $25 in both spots. Otherwise, um, you're not gonna you're not gonna make it. Okay, so I'm gonna try and keep these as making sure all my points are about as even as they possibly can be. Let me go ahead and put my chip clip in here because I didn't get my pipe cleaner ready, which is you only need half. Well, no, in this case we're actually using full ones. So we are going to go right around the center of our pinwheel, just like that. Try to find a center point. And then we are going to twist. Oop, that is definitely not center. Move this down just a touch. There we go. Twist, tightening it like we do our bows. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to take these and you're gonna grab them by the outside edges, like here, and you're gonna pull. Okay, outside edges, pull. Outside edges, pull. Outside edge, pull. Okay, from here, you're taking your outside edges, you're pulling those two, just right here. Pull, 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 pull. Oops, pull. I need to move my pipe cleaner to the underside. So here, you want to get those, you want to close the gap. Okay, pull here, pull here, pull here, and I go to my outside edge here. Pull, pull, pull. And so what you have is a really nice looking pinwheel. Okay, so these pinwheels are actually going to go in the places of these. So before I do that, right where I have my red pipe cleaners, I'm going to go ahead and remove my reds. This is going to be where, oop, didn't want to do that. Hang on. Let me run. Do you have another red? You mean red? No, I think I have it. I have to go through that one. I didn't want to cut that one off yet. This is what happens when you go oops and you cut your pipe cleaner off where you didn't mean to. Well, number one, I'm going to put my center back through. Rosalind said you're an amazing designer and instructor. Thanks, Rosalind. So I'm just going to feed my pipe cleaner. Back up, back through. My mesh. I've done this in the past. Sometimes, you know, you look at a design and you're like, hey, it didn't really work out the way I wanted. Okay, but we've got so many different layers to go through. So the ribbon for the pinwheels are eight inches. Yes. Trying to get my last piece, and pipe cleaners don't make it easy to go through multiple layers of mesh. So there we go. We're back in the center. Let me do this real quick with these. We have the two remaining pieces left. So here and here, 
we are going to, I think I'm going to do the stars on top. Okay. I'm going to gather, we're going to go ahead and place these here. Then I'm going to cut them off. Okay, that goes off. We tuck this down. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did below. We're going to frame these just like this. Pop them out. So they all frame out. Go over here. Do this last one. And then we can put our pinwheels on. So each, each pinwheel is six pieces, right? Six pieces cut to eight inches. Eight inches right. Yes. Snip. So this design is 24 pieces total. Of what? For the pinwheels. To make four pinwheels. To make four pinwheels, yeah. 12 of this fabric, 12 of the other. Don't get confused and go 24 total because if you have two different ribbons, it's still 24 total, right? It's 12 of 12 these. Of these different designs. Yes. Right. You're going grand total, so I just don't want people to get confused and think they cut 24 of each piece because it's not. Okay, there's that and this so so what's happening here well these pieces are going to border the side of our sign and that's where our sign's going to go is right in here so those are going to make for a nice little splash out from the middle of our sign so i'm going to go ahead and feed that back down through all that mesh through many many layers of mesh This is where floral wire is just so nice because it never fails. You always get one, one piece of foil sticks on the end of your um, pipe cleaner and then it won't go all the way through until you get the piece of foil off around the outside. That's what I'm doing. I'm literally moving the foil end off. So we'll snug this down right here. Give it its twists. Go back over here. We're going to place this one right in the same section. One over the top. Remember, we're going through a lot of mesh. So there's one. And we need to make sure that it's also coming on either side of a metal frame. Yeah, Camille or Richard, yeah, you could use a yarn needle or a weaving needle. Mm-hmm. I just didn't grab that. Showing you, you can do it without it. Okay, so see how those kind of splash outward? Okay, these are gonna simply remind us where our pinwheels are gonna go. So right over here, we're gonna go ahead and put our first pinwheel. You wanna make sure it does not impact your sign. So I like the way that's laying right there. So I need to make sure, I'm trying to find my frame. Okay, you got one in. Okay. Jolene says the pinwheels are too cute. Aren't they super cute? I think it looks good for a uh, patriotic wreath just because it kind of gives it that like a firework look. So there's one, just like so. Trying to get these to stay out. 
we're going to go ahead and remove this one. This is where our other pinwheel will go. Because when I initially made these, I only put them on six inch uh, pipe cleaners. So I'm just going to go through and make sure I have enough so that we're good. I'm going to cut the excess off like that. Remember, take your pieces and found them out. This one is going to go right in here. Thanks all for the loves. These are your really beautiful leaves. Thank you. Okay, there's that one. I had it. Had it and then it hid from me, believe it or not. This is where you could even do um, floral wire for your pinwheels. And I kind of want them just touching the sign, but not impeding the design. So just like that. And then we'll go ahead and put the two at the top. Sure. Two, our mesh is going down inside. Make sure these fan out. Okay, we're going to take. There we go. I have another one for my other pinwheel. We'll make with the red, white, and blue stars. twist take our six inch ones off nice and very pretty thank you so these are going to go on the opposite corners you could keep them all the same if you wanted you know they're this almost looks like your traditional, almost like an election banner type. Um, yeah. We're going to go ahead and place this one right about there is where this will fall in. Okay. Down and through. Let's see. Is that going to wind up? I think it will. Make sure. Well, I think it was already she sent 500 stars. Thank you. And we'll get our other one. Down. There we go. Okay. Go ahead and Fan out your banner. Making sure my pinwheels stay on top. Okay. Mary asks, can you tilt the camera down when you do the next pinwheel so you can see how you're doing with these? Uh, what are do you mean? Attaching it? Attaching it is just going right in here where the pipe cleaner is. So right where that one is, is right where our pipe cleaner is going. Um, but I'll show you how we make the last one. So make sure this is moved. Okay, you guys can see this, right? So you start, these are six inch pieces that have had them cut into points. Okay, then we're gonna fold them by folding them, starting with right side fabric, folding it to where the edges meet. Okay, just kind of putting a little crease there. 
and it's just like paper airplanes. So we fold them down, okay, flip it over, and then fold it down. And go ahead and crease that. And then this is where I use the larger chip clip to hold it till I can fold the next one. And the fold is exactly the same for all of them. So just like that, flip it over, fold it here. And I'm trying to keep my patterns as consistent as I can. So if you notice, I kind of have, you know, I'm trying to keep my pattern the same. But by the time you fold your pinwheel in half, you get half a look. Like this one is like big and then this one's like small. So it's just the way it pans out. But it all looks good together. Okay. Up and over. Up and over. Okay. Going to pull these apart. Line them up the best you can. Okay. That's all it's doing is holding those pieces in place. Definitely these are six, uh, eight inches. Yeah, eight inch, two and a half inch wired ribbon with the points cut off. So they're, the ribbon is cut into a pointed shape. So when you're, when you're folding your ribbon and doing your cuts, you're making them into points and not dovetails. So if you've been doing it as long as I have in dovetailing, I threw it out, but I had a ribbon here that was a dovetailed in, and that was strictly because habit. You know, we get into the habit. It's a good habit to have, which means I'll dovetail on my ribbons, but okay, make these ones kind of match as best as we can. It's not going to be 100% perfect, but we can try. Two more, fold in half, then fold down, crease, crease, okay, I'm adding it to my stack. Right, Richard, yeah, it's a reverse dovetail. <laughs> yeah, I just keep saying, flip it over, do it the other side. Okay, here, fold it down. Now you can do this with inch and a half ribbon, but with um, six pieces of ribbon, you're not gonna get as full. Like these are really wide. So with inch and a half ribbon, you're only gonna get about half as many. So I am thinking if you were making it out of inch and a half ribbon, you almost have to double it because otherwise they won't be as thick. To Maybe where they'll connect. Sell the other one? No, I have not sold the other one. I haven't really been pushing the marketing side of that. I was just, hey, here's what I made. <laughs> That's where it went. Okay, so I'm just trying to get those to measure up as best as I can. I'm going to go ahead and put those together. We're going to get our pipe cleaner. Kind of put it in the U shape. We're going to try to find middle point, which is about right where the red band is. So I'm just going to kind of go up and over, just like we're doing a bow. You know, make sure that that looks even to you. I guess it just depends on where your red is. I want it up a little bit more. Right there. Twist. Twist, twist, twist. Okay, then when you lay it down, it's like fans we used to make in school, right? See how these are not even? I've got to readjust this. I don't have it evened. Even, even. One side is way longer, and the other side is way shorter. So that whole measurement thing did not pan out. Okay, I'm gonna fold it so right where my thumb is. Oop. 
Okay, did we get it that right? Looks like it. That's probably going to be the hardest thing in the whole thing is making sure your pinwheels are the right. And so I'm just taking the outside pieces. So outside and outside and pull just like these. Okay. Outside, outside, pull. Outside, outside, pull. Outside, outside, pull. Outside, outside, pull. Okay, pull. You're gonna pull a little harder on the ones where you're trying to make them meet. Okay, outside, outside. Outside, outside. Outside, outside. I got the pipe cleaner underneath. So there's your pinwheel. Okay, this pinwheel is going in this location. So I just, I left it there so I know where it's at. Okay, I have my pipe cleaner right here. That is going. I just measure where everything's going to wind up, where the tips of my pinwheel are gonna be. I don't want it to really impede my sign. You can always kind of, there's a little bit of play where you can kind of pull them back a bit. But right about there is where I want it. Mm -hmm. I want on the back side, she's got about six inches of the pipe cleaner on each side to push through the mesh. Yeah, I've got, well, a little bit more. To the frame. So I've got to get it through all the layers of the mesh. See, this is what it's doing. All the layers. And it always gets caught on one piece. Okay, pull it down. Make sure this goes flat. Okay. I want it just barely grazing. The A. Now I've got to get the other one down. And make sure that I'm on opposite sides of my metal ring. So again, making sure outside edge, outside edge. This is where I'm dealing with the mesh that's becoming like it just wants to stick this one piece right here. So I'm going to take this piece and lay it so I can get my pinwheel in just like that. Okay, so it's right in between my M touching my A making sure I hit my rail. Okay, now if I take it and I flip it, pinwheel, 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 sign, sign, pinwheel, pinwheel. It's right over the exact same ones, okay? So that, the upper piece now, you have to go through and straighten out all your ribbon tails because Lord, we have been playing with them like crazy. Okay. That's a good idea for American Wreath. I love learning something new. Right. Mary says, Mine didn't turn out that pretty. What happened, Mary? This will feed my OCD to make sure the colors all line up on that. Right, and but you can't because when you look at the ribbon, you've got. See, like how I have a fat, and it then falls. from here, yeah, and then it goes too small. But it's enough that um, it matches. I can let that part of my my OCD side <laughs> let go. So always make sure the rest of your ribbon tails are all fanned out. Okay, okay, so now I know what I was doing wrong with attaching the pinwheel. What were you doing wrong? Okay, and then these go out. So basically we have ribbon tails that fan out. You still see the edge of the deco mesh. Now in this particular wreath, if you used what's called border mesh, which is mesh that just has the details to the outside edge, that would look really pretty. 
because really the only thing you're seeing on the mesh is the outside edge. Mm -hmm. You don't really see that it's red, white, and blue mesh. Oop, I got this one. This is beautiful, but the canoe is better than, more, better than the ribbon tails. Or so well, it's beautiful, I would have to watch the replay. Yeah, I'm just going around and refeathering. They're super fun and just imagine like how fun that would be. I mean, even if you wanted to, like if somebody was buying like matching garland, mm -hmm. you can do the matching garland and then just sell the little individual pinwheels too. So they could have matching pinwheels to go on their garland. But there you have it. There is the final design. Uh, I think when we go... If you go ribbon tail to ribbon tail, I think we said it's 23. So um, here's the height thing, right? Because that's what was the most important thing. So I'm going right here with my pipe cleaner, right to the edge. Okay, right here is roughly where we're at. Go all the way over here. We are, if I do it on the 10, we are two and a half inches from here to here exactly where my pipe cleaner goes all the way down. Okay, these are still flat. Right here, level with my sign, two and a half inches. And that's where you wanna be for a storm door. So there you have it. In a nutshell, a very gorgeous, very beautiful, very full, cause you're not sacrificing any type of quality you're just doing a different design embellishment. Oh, wait a second, before you leave, let me show you. We forgot the finishing touches, I forgot these. So these are styrofoam glitter stars. And I got them from Amazon. Steve's gonna share my affiliate link with you so you can go purchase these. Cause you, will, you can use these on the Patriotic Rose wreath. And I'm looking for them. They're like a middle mid-sized star like that. So there's the red, here's our blue. Let's get another red and a blue. Here's our blue. And let's find another red that size. So you can go right here. Okay, these are just some fun embellishments. So these are styrofoam uh, star glitter stickers. So this is what I do. I pull off the adhesive. I'm gonna add in a dollop of hot glue. You wanna make sure that you keep your stars facing in the right direction. So we're gonna do red on that one. We'll do blue on the opposites. Okay. Go ahead and do that. Yes, Marcella, thanks for catching that. What's that? Somebody asked what frame this is on, and I meant to type in 14 inch Dollar Tree frame, mm -hmm. but it came out 24 inch. Oh, no, no, no. So I, I corrected it. Yes, 14 yes, inch. Yes, thanks, 14 inch Dollar Tree frame. So this is just because the adhesive will eventually wear off. So those are just getting stuck right to the pipe cleaner and the ribbon that's right in the center, just to kind of give it a little extra sparkle. And the gals that said they definitely want to try this, bottom left, just click share on your own page. Now we can get back to it really easy and watch the replay. Okay, and then I'm gonna do one more small embellishment. So you get this whole bag of stars for like $10.99 on Amazon. Um, and this will give you enough to do, Lord help you, a lot of projects. I've had this, I think, for two plus years. And you can see how many of them I still have left. Um, you could also, if you didn't do the um, adhesive stars, you could also use the scatters and fillers. You could come, you know, and add like a blue to this, or you could have added a red here. You could have added, you know, scatters and fillers instead of stars if you have these. Um, I like to add them right to the outside edges here because it just kind of looks funky how the ribbon just spans out and I think it ties it in really good. So I'm just going to add a dollop of glue. 
this is going to stick right to my ribbon right here in the center so that it looks like everything that we did had a purpose in the design but it also keeps the ribbon from fanning back out so there you guys go what do you think actually i found my other styrofoam stars they're in here too uh what was the sign dimensions so it's probably gonna be five and a half by eleven and a half. It's on the paper. The sign dimension yeah. is eleven and a half by five, five and a half. Five and a half by eleven and a half. Right. Yep. So, and that would be I wouldn't go anything bigger than that. I would stop right there. Um, you can definitely go with a vertical sign and do the same thing. You know, something vertical but thinner uh, would look equally just as good. Hopefully, this has given you a lot of super fun ideas. Even, see, it wouldn't have made a bit of difference if we would have done scatters and fillers on the lower half because you wouldn't have seen them. You have these that all lay over the top. So, there you have it. There's right, so a thank you, Ken, for your great video. Cleared up a few things for me. Would love to show you what I did. Oh, you can always send me uh, pictures at info at castcreationsandmore.com. If you want to share your photos, even when you get your, um, if you guys do pancake grease, I want to see what you did or pancake grease you may have done in the past. Go ahead and send me pictures at info at catscreationsandmore.com. If you guys would like to join my private group, you could do so. We are doing on Tuesday the hardest deco mesh method um, in our back to basics class. It's actually finishing up our back to basics on deco mesh. Um, and we're doing curl and weave base techniques. So if you'd like to join us, come join us at castcreationsandmore.com. And you can either go monthly or yearly. You get a better savings if you go yearly. Um, but you have access to four plus years of private tutorials on everything that I've ever taught. Um, discounts on your supplies plus... Um, Materials list for everything I've done in a public or private live. So that's kind of nice because you just sit back and you watch it and you can just download the materials list in the morning and use it as a shopping list and go buy all your supplies. But everything here except the round scatters and fillers, those are from Hobby Lobby and the glitter stars are from Amazon. Everything else is from Craft Outlet. How much would you charge for this? Um, this is actually 75 is what I'm charging for this, which is a lower price point uh, for as embellished as a pancake wreath would be. So when you actually put this on your door, it does not look like you have sacrificed in any way, shape, or form uh, putting the entire design together. Okay. I will talk to you guys later. Don't forget, join me every Friday at 5 Pacific and every Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific. And I will talk to you all later. Have a great night.